Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, back. Listen, I want to ask you a quick question. What's got you on the run? Who's got you intimidated? Who's got you under their thumb? Do you jump when a person gets angry? Do you want to run and hide when they raise their voice at you? Why? Is it because they're hitting you? Well, let me tell you this. God is love. Okay. Perfect love casts out all fear. Now listen to this. There is no fear in love. I'm getting little bits and pieces. I'm doing paraphrasing of scripture. I'll put the references up later. But listen to this. God's kind of love does not beat you down. God's kind of love, which is called agape love, A-G-A-P-E, is unconditional. So if you have to toe the line to for this person to love you, or you have to act just right for that person not to put you out on the street, or you have to obey to the letter in order for brother man not to beat your behind, that is not what you call love. That is what you call intimidation, control, abuse, threat, installation of fear, domination. When a person has to control you like that and keep you on a tight leash, they have a lot of fear of their own. And they don't feel powerful, strong, manly, or womanly, whatever the case may be. There are a lot of women that abuse as well. And some of you men are being abused and you're not telling anybody. People like that are threatened by your freedom. They're threatened by your abilities and your gifts. So in order to keep themselves feeling on top of the world, they have to beat you down. They have to disrespect you and tear you up with their words and jab you and, and hurt you in all the areas they know will hurt you deeply. And, and then, here's the trip, they manipulate. So when they get through hurting you and they look at you, they watch you. And when they see the pain and the hurt on your face, or they see the fear and the intimidation, oh boy, they, they feel like they're all that and a bag of chips. They like seeing that. Do you hear what I'm saying? But here's the sad part. It makes them feel like they're somebody. Some of you have stooped so low and settled so far down to get somebody, anybody to love you because you don't think much of yourself. You don't realize how God sees you. You don't realize all that God has put in you because you have heard for so long all the lies. Do you know that comes from an anointing from the devil? Anything that talks bad about you, you're nothing. You'll never be anything. I don't know what I put up with you for. If it wasn't for me, you'd be out on the streets. Who else would want you? Nobody would want you. That does not come from God. Those are anointed words straight from hell. The devil is in control of this person that you choose to remain involved and connected with. And this person is on assignment from the enemy to suck the life out of you. Don't let him do it. Don't let the devil have his way with you. You're too precious. You're too valuable. Okay, 
here's another thing I want you to see because I want you to, to understand some of you are locked in and there is nothing anybody can do about it because unless you're ready to go, you're going to die in that situation. I hate to say that. What you are sucking on, what you are uh, reaching for and trying so hard to cling and hang on to is not love. There's no love in that. It's control. It's pure manipulation. Over domination. It's, it's abuse. Okay, moving right along. Now I'm talking to those of you who may start seeing the red flags and you may not quite recognize what you're seeing or hearing. If you are dating someone or you have just come to know someone who was really into you the way you always wanted somebody to be. And every time you turn around, they're showing up. And every time you turn around, they're asking you where you were. You think that's love. No, it's not. That is the beginning of a nightmare. Abuses start out that way. Because what they start out doing is keeping you dancing. You're on the edge of your, or, you know, you're walking on eggshells because, because you want them to love you. Because you're desperate for love. And you're insecure. And you think this is the best you're going to get. So you're all excited because somebody is actually paying you attention. But at the same time, they know this. They have sniffed you out a mile away. And what they see is a flunky. Now, they're not going to say it. Some of them won't even admit it to themselves, male or female. And when they look at you, they see your reactions and they know how to play you. And after a while, they start playing you just like a fiddle. And then they'll tell you to jump and you jump. And they'll calm you down and make you feel all loved and, 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 and tender. And, and, and they're wooing you and pulling you and drawing you in. And, oh, they're just showering you with gifts. And, oh, you're just so wonderful. I don't know what made me so angry. You know, I have a problem. You know, just work with me, baby. I don't think I can live without you. Yeah, right. And next thing you know, they're accusing you of looking at someone else, of flirting with somebody. They don't want you around your family because your family will tear you guys apart. And you don't want anything to come between you. Yeah, right. And before you know it, you when you when he's coming home or she's pulling up in the driveway, if you're on the phone talking to your mother, brother, sister, father, who or just buddy, you're going to end that conversation, and get off the phone in order to keep peace in the house because they know you don't like upheaval. So they will keep confusion going in order to keep you towing the line. Oh, I'm telling you, if you have somebody who is jealous, suspicious, always picking an argument, flaring up about nothing, gawking at you and staring you down and not wanting to be around your family and not wanting to be around your friends and not wanting you to be around them, you better get out of that thing quick. Because if you don't, you will get so locked in because this is the way they play it. One minute they hate you, they beat you down, they talk about you like you're nothing. Then the next minute they, they, they can cry crocodile tears. I mean, I mean they can cry. I've seen, I've seen it. They can cry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, 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 I really need you to be patient with me, baby, because I need you to love me. I need to know somebody believes in me. And I, I, I can't live without you. Oh, please. And they will convince you that they need you, that you are the source of their life. And you're not. And they know you're not. But what they need is somebody they can beat, like people who are cruel to animals, and they get a kick out of hurting them, and a kick out of hearing them whimper. <coughs> Excuse me. And they get a kick out of seeing you whimper too, because it makes them feel powerful. That is not love. That's dangerous. That is deadly. You don't need it. Take my word for it. Get out of that. I saw a woman die 
from multiple complications and, and internal bleeding from years and years of abuse. He had her so locked in, even when he tried to kick her out, she begged to let for him to let her stay. She lost all this long, beautiful hair she had. She had beautiful skin. Her legs were covered with more varicose veins than it was pigment. I mean, she was a mess. And it took her 10 days to die from complications, from beatings and punchings and kickings. And it just got ridiculous. That's why I say, if you don't get out early enough and you whimper down, and you become and you begin to worship this person and idolize them and feel less of yourself and believe their lies about you you'll die in that situation you will live a miserable life constantly trying to satisfy somebody who is never going to be satisfied that's my warning to you observe the red flags and get out, get out, get out while you can. In the name of Jesus, break free.